I heard some noises from the room. Origami Bird? That's a friend of mine! You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? The compass is a ship bound for the New World. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say, Despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. <sighs> you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Not an elder. I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. It seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Penacony at all. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll, I'll remember more things if we go further. I wish to share your burden. We're going to the opposite side, right? No. We should...
turn left here. Uh-huh. Something feels different about this place. This is it. I remember this corridor. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. It was in that room. Saw him the last time. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Misha, you finally come. Clocky, you're here. This is the room where we first met each other. Are those books on the bookshelf logbooks left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... it's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then... He gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hey, the shape seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate.
This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears, out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Marge, do you remember when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the Trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh... Wait... Uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather, the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard, was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork, or simply, Misha. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name, the Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I'm only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky, 
a young apprentice, and a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little flame, flame which, which I so, so cherished, cherished in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, dreams hoping to pass it on, on to the, the nameless of future, of future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey guiding that naive child forward and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone, let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. There's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. 
Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go! And if you must, please take me with you! Don't leave me alone! Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train, and start your journey! Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry, not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of Trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah, I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to... write to us. Huh? Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panagoni. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have! Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Panagoni if we lose you too? But what will happen to Panagoni if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We Nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next Watchmaker. 
Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacony. If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacony, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Esdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade, and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... A desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember. Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid. And there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dream. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the Watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dreamflux Brief. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. traveled far enough, and it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again, when you're rested? <laughs> no, I'll stay here, and then 
This is where it ends. This is... where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you! Misha? You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm... I'm... not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your, your hands, hands, always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Peniconian Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. to glance at Peniconi at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Peniconi. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Peniconi and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Peniconi Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Peniconi, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Thank you. 
Please stay tuned. Please stay tuned. <clears throat> we need a strategy. Please stay tuned. Time to test our rapport. Let's improvise. <gasps> it's time. <laughs> oh, what if it hurt? <laughs> Take your positions. Data secured. Net markers activated. Time for a good old counterattack. In the mood for another beating? By the order of the Ten Lord, execute the Marastruck! No one misses the Marastruck. <laughs> Rhythm get the mood is set just right. Let the show begin. Commencing support. Ready for another? Do you admit this crime? How's this take? Thanks for the support. Stay in step. Nice like a good brew. My friends? <laughs> Indulge yourselves! Dreams do come true. Step up, let's see ya. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Arc villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. moment arrives, you hesitate. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony, and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However... The same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight, and they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream, to slumber and escape reality. 
All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacone's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said... I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. In a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacone. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet is death. May, May we, we meet again, again in reality. reality. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. Or salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's. That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's 
exactly why we have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human. Though its definition escapes me, isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. The tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription, Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together 
isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. <laughs>